it's going to come down to, you know, what they knew about what was being Hi. I think okay, so I need to turn off this weekend law. In the case that for now. Didn't use anything that there we go. Really interesting one this week. Um, okay, um, today I'm going to do something that um, I know people have been waiting for. Um, I started with the first four months of my calendar um, a while back. Since we're about to turn into May um, next week, I thought I'd start with May. Um, I finished with April's Cabos and Lucas last time. I put a link to all these pictures um, below. So May is from uh, Denver, <laughs> where I live. Um, this is Red Rocks Amphitheater, which is actually officially in Morrison, which is sort of on the I-70 on the way out of Denver, up into the mountains. Um, and you can just see the Denver skyline in this picture here. Um, I apologize if I end up putting my sunglasses on during this. I don't like to when I'm doing um, videoing. Just to let you guys know, I use a hands-free device that's mounted on my windshield. My camera's mounted on my windshield. I am not holding the camera and driving. It is not over in my passenger seat. It's actually on, mounted on my windshield. So, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, so the picture from Red Rocks. Um, when I started photography, Well, I've always seen pictures, but you know, started wanting to take it a little bit more seriously. Um, Christmas of 2009, I got this little Canon S90 that I that I use for videoing in the car, um, and I started thinking about all the settings on my camera that um, I didn't know what were. I mean, I've always just pointed and clicked. You know, what what's an aperture? What's a shutter speed? Well. I knew what shutter speed was, but you know. Um, so I decided to um, take um, an online photography course from proudphotography.com. It was only a hundred and something dollars, um, and I actually did get feedback on my work and everything before deciding to get my first DSLR. Um, I wanted to make sure I was enjoying it before and, and learning about my camera before actually uh, going out and making that kind of purchase. So um, one of the assignments, I'm getting back to the picture, I promise. So one of the assignments was um, to, uh, uh, was a composition assignment. So um, the assignment was to find um, repetition or leading lines to use in your photograph and I immediately thought of um, the stairs at Red Rocks Amphitheater uh, and I went up there and I took some photos <laughs> and they're all right <laughs> they're not very good <laughs> um, but I decided to go back a year later and do some of the same types of things um, to see, you know, to show myself what I'd learned since I took those photographs. So, um, I went up there and I shot, amongst other photos, that photo. Um, it's about a 20 minute drive from my house. Um, it's about 8,000 feet. Um, and as you can see in the photo, a lot of people use it as an exercise machine. <laughs> people run up and down the stairs. They're insane. Um, people <laughs> walk up and down the stairs. People will walk the, the seats like lengthwise. And I was just really, really pleased with how that picture turned out. I thought it had a lot of m motion in it. And um, it shows one of my favorite places in Denver. When we lived in Denver before, um, we lived very close to there in Golden. And um, I've always wanted to go to a concert there. You know, U2's um, Under a Blood Red Sky was recorded there. Um, and uh, this year, I finally went um, in August. Oh, God, that's almost... That's over six months ago. Oh, my God. We're, we're, like, closer to August. Yeah. 
this year than we are last year. So um, I got to see Stevie Nicks there, and um, I love Stevie. <laughs> Stevie's like amazing. I love her. I had seen her in Fleetwood Mac in Adelaide at the Oval once, um, but never, you know, just Stevie, and it was. Um, amazing. It was her first solo concert since the epically disastrous 1985 um, what's that album called? Rocket? Or Rock? Yeah, I can't remember the name of the album right this second, but it had like Stand Back. And, but in 1985 she had an epically disastrous concert um, and ended up in rehab at Red Rocks. So it was her first, you know, return to Red Rocks. It was her first solo concert since then. And it was just, it was amazing. Um, really, sitting up there is just astonishing. So Red Rocks is sort of a neat place. Um, you know, Colorado means, you know, um, the color red. Because you know, we have a lot of Red Rocks. Um, so... Yeah, so that's that's Red Rocks Amphitheater. They were setting up or taking down from a show and people were running around, it was hot, and I was just really, really happy um, with the photo that I took. Now, I apologize if there will be um, little, maybe you'll notice that I might cut some video here, here and there in this one. Um, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but if it does, because I don't wanna obviously hold up calendar picture while I'm driving, if I'm, you know, moving on to the next one, so, um, I have to wait for a red light or something so I can, so I can hold it up again. I'm, I'm on my way to have breakfast. I'm, it's Friday and, um, I normally have lunch with my husband, but he can't meet me till about three, so we're gonna have a late lunch, early dinner, so I thought I'd go have a more substantial breakfast today. Okay, so June's picture is uh, of Mercury Bay in New Zealand on the Coromandel Peninsula. Cathedral Cove is right down here. This is where I go. Um, this is taken from the parking lot as you would start the walking track down to Cathedral Cove. If you've seen Prince Caspian in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe series, um, Cathedral Cove is where they sort of come out on the beach. Um, it's Mercury Bay. Um, uh, my in-laws have a batch at um, Cook's Beach, which is about a 10-15 minute drive from the Cathedral Cove parking lot, um, depending on traffic, although I, I don't know what you consider traffic in New Zealand. <laughs> um, and uh, when I used to go there, uh, how long ago? 1994 I started going. <sighs> the track was really not that fancy. Um, you could go down there and still feel pretty alone. Um, now in summer, especially in high season in summer, it's the parking lot gets so full. Um, my son has taped a video um, of him and his brother walking down to Cathedral Cove with the grandparents. I, I keep meaning to edit it and put it together. Um, and I will get there, I promise. It just hasn't gotten done yet. Um, so you can see sort of the walk down the Cathedral Cove. And, and it gets quite busy there now, um, especially in summer. Um, but it's this arched, uh, I want to say blowhole, but it's not a blowhole. It's an arch that the water's gone through the, the limestone rock. And um, so it sort of forms a domed sort of cathedral look that you walk through and white, white sand and gorgeous, um, gorgeous white rocks with lots of Hudakawas clinging to it. Um, and you know, just super, super clear water. A lot of people take kayak tours uh, from Hahe over to Cathedral Cove. Um, I don't go there as much anymore. I went there this year at sunrise because I really wanted to shoot it. Um, and that, like that summer, oh, there's a poor duck. Uh, poor ducky, don't cross the road, you stupid thing. Um, 
last year we did we just went to the parking lot we didn't walk down it was very hot um, and just busy um, and it's just not that nice to frankly to um, to be there with all those tourists when you're used to seeing it uh, as a local <laughs> it's funny I sort of consider myself a local in the Coromandel because I do come and spend at least two weeks there every year. Um, I know my sister-in-law who lives in Hamilton, I'd say she probably spends about the same amount of time as that at Cook's Beach um, every year. So I've been coming there for 18 years. I think, you know, I, I know the place pretty well. <laughs> it's not that big. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, the Coromandel just it's a little tiny peninsula on the North Island of New Zealand and it is stunning it's like I want to retire at Hahe or, or at least spend a significant amount of the year at Hahe at some point either Hahe or Cooks or um, you know somewhere in the Mercury Bay area of the Coromandel when I when we can do that Next picture is July. It is taken um, in Ullensvang in uh, Hardangerfjord in Norway. Hardangerfjord is one of the largest fjords in Norway. I took it last year when I was home. I think most of my viewers know that I am Norwegian. Um, if you didn't, there you go. <laughs> uh, I am the only member of my biological family apart from my offspring that lives outside of Norway. Okay, um, so Hadanga Fjord is uh, one of the largest fjords in western Norway, well in Norway in general, as the Queen Fjord I think they call it. Sognefjord is the king, it's much larger, but Hadanga Fjord I think is probably the prettiest. Um, you can drive to Hadanga Fjord from Bergen very very easily. This was on a day trip um, that my husband and my kids I took um, and involved lots of picturesque fairies and um, one of the things that Haranga Fjord is uh, really quite famous for is um, apples. Um, there are a lot of apple orchards in Haranga Fjord and cherries I think they're called in cherries. Is there a, two different kinds of cherries? Because they're not like the cherries that you have like in your um, like in your cocktail. They're like a darker burgundy red. Anyway, they're awesome and they're really good. So this picture was taken um, July last year. Um, a few days after the 22nd of July. 
that's such a it's so relevant right now because you know the trial of Anders Bergbreivik is going on and so anyway it wasn't a particularly gorgeous day I was hoping I'd been wanting to go the day before this is looking up like the fjord is just behind you here there's water there and and it's looking up into you know one of the one of the features of a fjord is you know it has these massive steep mountains that come up and, 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 and you can usually say that a, a fjord is as deep going down as the mountains going up and you know they're glacial glacial valleys that have been filled up with with salt and um fresh water basically um and um Krieg, very close to where i took this photograph edward Krieg wrote um Pierre Gint, in case you're interested in that you know the morning da, 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 da. okay um, that was in Loftus actually but so it wasn't that particularly a beautiful day and I was really kind of annoyed because I get to go to Norway so seldom I have to go to Norway so seldom depending on how you look at it uh, and Bergen was not putting on a fantabulous weather show for me and I really wanted you know to take all these amazing photos that I had pictured with all this beautiful weather um, and you know the fjords all this beautiful weather I'd been hoping for and, and you know and so in the early morning it was misty and dreary and the clouds were hanging really really low right in magic hour light time and I was that I wasn't going to get any good shots from Haranga Fjord. Uh, <clears throat> I did get some from the ferry later in the day, but you know, it was, um, magic light was gone. It was way too late in the day. But uh, mid-morning, we were driving through Ullensvang, and, uh, The, the clouds just started lifting just a little bit and I was actually up in this spot because I thought it would be a great shot and there are some shots in my stream I think actually that show what you know I had in mind when I went up there that, that, that are looking down onto the fjord and in towards the, sort of the arm of the fjord um, and looking at the actual water and um, <clears throat> I turned around and saw these clouds lifting up off the peaks with the apple orchard and the farmhouses um, behind me and I, I took a couple of shots and changed my lens and so I think this is with the 50 um, <clears throat> and um, it turned out to be my favorite of the day uh, so sometimes you know you have all this meticulous planning and all these shots that you you, you have because it, it just has this magical feel to it it's very misty and you can see just a hint of blue sky and yeah i was uh really happy with that shot so may june july i'll do august as well august is from here in colorado in the rockies these are the missouri lakes um i don't can't remember if it's summit or eagle county i don't know it's probably summit. I, I don't know. It was taken in um, July last year. Um, it's not magic hour at all. Um, but the reflection that I managed to catch is amazing. It's, it's about 11,000 feet. We hiked um, up there, my husband and I. Um, we try to go for walks in the summer. Um, and the problem is, you know, I'm it's, it's an hour hike to these places and by, it's a two hour drive from your know, home usually or an hour and a half or whatever and so magic light in the summer is not then if I'm going to get magic light in the summer um, in those areas we have to stay up there and I have to hike up you know at sunrise so that's a commitment <laughs> financially basically but I am sometimes lucky enough to get something like that picture there with that astonishing reflection that I got in the little wildflowers out in front and I was able to fix the blown out sky at least a little bit um, I need better Photoshop skills I need better Lightroom skills I'm constantly learning 
I spend, you know, hours at my desk trying to figure out the mysteries of Photoshop and the mysteries of, of Lightroom. I'm not, I, I wouldn't, I don't consider myself a conventional artist. Like, I don't, I am an artist, obviously, because a photographer is an artist. But I don't consider myself very good with fiddly, precise work. I tend to get frustrated and say, well, that's good enough. I don't, you know, I have never taken Photoshop classes or, 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 or photo manipulation classes or, uh, so I sort of learn Photoshop on the fly, usually from a tutorial that I find that actually wants, um, that actually, d d uh, I'm looking for something specific, like in this one, my sky was totally blown out, and I basically dropped um, the luminosity of the blue in Lightroom to, to, to fix that. I've tried using a polarizing filter. Um, on my wide angle lens, it doesn't work that way for me, that well for me. A polarizing filter sort of works like sunglasses on your lens, on the top half of your lens, so that. Um, yeah, it distorts too much on my wide-angle lens, which is my favorite landscape lens that I own at the moment. So I try to fix it with things like HDR. I wish I had taken my HDR class before I shot that shot, actually, last summer. Um, you know, something I, in retrospect, I might have tried doing in HDR to get a better sky and better, less blown out clouds. But I still really, really like the picture. I think it shows the Rocky Mountains um, in summer really well. It was a hard ass climb up there, I will tell you that. Um, you go past this tiny place called Douglas City, uh, <laughs> which is basically like four uh, ruins of log cabins for this. Um, oh no, that's up to the Hagerman Tunnel. Wrong place. Sorry. But Douglas City, anyway, is, a, is <laughs> it's a, a collection of four ruins of log cabins uh, for the Italian workers who dug the Hagerman Tunnel. And um, <laughs> it's like they lived up there at like 10,000 feet or whatever. And there were like 11 whorehouses or like five saloons or something like that. <laughs> it's like, God, he's... Oh man, the Wild West, seriously. <laughs> it, at 10,000 feet, you know, it's just like absolutely ludicrous. Don't quote me directly on the 10,000 feet. It might not be quite 10,000. It, it's around that. But Missouri lakes are these little tiny little lakes up in the Colorado's, in, in, the, in Colorado Rockies, um, west of Vale but I can't remember exactly where they are right this second. But yeah, so that's uh, four months for you. I'm almost at where I wanna have breakfast. I wanna have breakfast at Snooze today. Hopefully I won't have to wait too long in line. And uh, then I'm gonna go to the Denver Art Museum and go see the YSL exhibit there, which is in Denver, uh, Paris, London, and Denver. <laughs> God, like, what's up with that? Um, so, and then I'm going to the Asian market that I've been meaning to go to for a billion years, but since I actually have extra time today before I'm meeting John, I can do it, um, today and still fit in the Yves Saint Laurent, um, exhibit. So I'm excited about that. I don't know if this is even remotely interesting, but um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and um, I will talk to you soon. Bye.